Welcome to the eighth video in the iNav series. In this video, we're very quickly going to look at a brand new process that's been developed in conjunction with a lot of other iNav fixed wing pilots on the best way to go from the last video where we talked about how to configure iNav from a software point of view, set up your servos, your throws, your linkages, all that kind of great stuff, and get it up and flying in a handful of test flights. So this process is pretty new and it is more of a guide. This process is the summary of what all these pilots have been doing and based on my experience as well. There may be other ways to do it that might be better or worse. This is just the one that seems to fit with most people's experiences getting to fly. It's important to note that iNav will fly a poorly set up plane. If your center of gravity isn't exactly spot on, if your throws aren't exactly right, if your servos aren't exactly at 90 degrees, then iNav will take care of a lot of that, but you will potentially sacrifice some performance, agility and stability by having it set up that way. As with all models, having it set up as best as you possibly can mechanically before you try and fly a model with iNav will give you the best possible results. Just like last time we talked about the need to have the servos at 90 degrees, that's a very old trick and we've talked about that in lots of other videos, including a video where we went through the entire setup process with the Tyrannus radio and it explains why that's the case, but very briefly, if the servo isn't at 90 degrees, then you will get uneven throws and that's particularly important for things like ailerons where you may have two servos, one in each wing controlling the ailerons or the elevons as we have in the wing here and you will get different throws in each direction and that means that you'll get some kind of squirrely behavior. So let me go through this process that's been developed with all these other pilots and what I will say here is the process is more of a guide really. This is just the culmination of everybody's experiences including my own so use it as that and use it under caution. The first two parts of this process are optional. If you are not bothered about having the aircraft set up absolutely perfectly mechanically so that you can fly in pass-through mode without having a problem, then you could skip right to the third part. But I personally would recommend as a plane pilot that you have the ability to plop into pass-through mode and for the default deflection of all the control surfaces to be set so that you can fly level and okay. That gives you an out if the flight controller starts to do something a bit weird or something starts to go wrong. And the way you would do that is exactly how you would maiden any other fixed wing model where you get your friend to throw it up and you catch it and you fly it around and you trim the model using the trims on the radio. Now this is flying in pass-through so the flight controller is doing absolutely nothing at all apart from just relaying the control inputs from your radio out to the servos in the wing. Once you've got it trimmed and you're happy then land the model Take a note of all of the positions of the control surfaces, the rudder, elevator, ailerons, or the elevons in the case of the wing. Then reset all of the trims on the radio and use the mechanical linkages on those control surfaces to get them all back to where they were when you have the trim set on the radio. That means at the middle position with the servos at 90 degrees that if you flick into pass-through mode then it will all be okay and you have that get out of jail free if you need it. Once you've got all that set up, then it's time to start our first test. And we're going to put the model into angle or horizon mode. Angle seems to be the most popular, where the flight controller is going to do auto leveling of the model. And what you need to do there is to launch it, to take off, and to notice if you take your hands off the sticks and watch what the model is doing, you're watching for any particular tendencies, whether one of the wings is down, whether the nose is down or the nose is up, and taking a note of that, because that is what we are interested in. If it does nose down or nose up, then what you need to do is bring that back in, land it. You can either try and take care of that by doing the accelerometer calibration and by adjusting the level position that we talked about in the last video. If you remember with a wing, it's relatively straightforward. As long as the wing is pretty flat, you're probably going to be there or thereabouts. With a more conventional plane that has a lower rear, a small tail wheel, you probably want to lift that tail wheel up and have it elevated for the calibration for level. If, however, you're still struggling with it, and maybe you have a five degree down angle when you flick into angle mode, then you can just trim that out by going into the setup and 
putting that five degree correction into the orientation of the board. Once we're happy that angle mode is working and that the accelerometers and gyros and everything is self-leveling the plane and it's flying level without any of those tendencies or droops or drops to any particular side. So what I would do is take off again, potentially pop it in angle mode and also enable nav altitude hold or out hold mode as well. And what that should mean is the altitude is being managed by the iNav system itself. Have a fly in with angle and nav alt hold on to make sure that all that's working. Once you're happy that that's working, then you can go to the next piece. The next piece is to try our first bit of GPS flying. So we're going to have nav alt hold mode on again. This time we're not going to have angle, we're going to have nav pos hold. Now what should happen here is the plane should manage its own position around a particular point and it should just circle in the sky when you enable these two modes together. And because altitude hold is also turned on as well, it should also manage its height too. Again, be ready to come out of that and pop it either back into angle mode or even into pass through if you've done the first two steps, if you find that the craft is misbehaving or it's starting to work erratically. Once you've got that under your belt and you're happy that it's flying okay, the last one to try is our friend Nav RTH mode. Now Nav RTH, again, just like the multirotor, actually does a lot of things to get the craft to fly back towards the position that it was armed. And the reason it's the last one is because it's going to use the GPS, it's going to use the altitude hold mode and all the other pieces that we've already checked out in order to fly the model back to you safely. Once you've tried return to home a couple of times and it's all fine, then you can explore the other cool modes as well. There is a mode called Nav Launch. Nav Launch allows you to throw a model into the air and as soon as the model detects that it's been thrown, it initializes the motor and climbs steadily, levelly away from you. And then after five seconds, you get control back and then you can continue your flight. For those of us that have that wonderful feeling of trying to launch the wing while managing the throttle with our teeth, that is going to be a great mode for those of us that fly like that. What you do with nav launch is you flick it into launch mode, you arm the board and then set the throttle to the level that you want it to be after launch is finished, typically about 50%, and then you have a number of seconds to throw your model into the air. iNav will catch it, start the motor, level the craft, and climb gracefully away from you at the degree and angle that you've set in the CLI. So hopefully that helps those of you that are interested in setting it up on a wing or a fixed wing model. Now you've got an idea of a process to go through that should get you to the other side with the best chance of having all of these modes working and working well. Thanks to Constantine and the team at iNav for supporting this series. Again, I would absolutely recommend if this is something that you're using that you're getting the benefit from and you're putting it on a model and it's giving you a smile then take time to either join their patreon or to send them a couple of books using paypal this is a really great little project i'm very excited about this one and it's one of the few projects out there for the hobby that isn't just completely focused on 250 class quad racing so thank you again to all the inav team for putting the effort and development and giving us this kind of product Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.